Now on Denver 7, a federal judge strikes down the White House's mask mandate for public transportation. Why you'll likely still need one the next time you fly. Well, we know the price of weed is up. We certainly see that at the store because of the war in Ukraine and supply chain issues. We're taking a closer look at the impact the prices we pay are having on farmers and business owners. Plus, how dogs are helping people recovering from addiction create social networks. And Colorado lawmakers want to boost our state's wildfire response, the new bills to help volunteer fire departments. Thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 4. I'm Jacqueline Allen. A federal judge in Florida has struck down the White House mask mandate for planes and other public transportation. This ju judge ruled that the mandate is unlawful and it exceeds the authority of the CDC. Now, the White House called the decision disappointing and said the CDC is reviewing its options. The Department of Justice has not said if it will try to appeal yet, and it is also unclear how quickly this ruling will go into effect at airports and train stations. Both United and American Airlines tell ABC News that right now the mask mandate remains in place on their planes. They're waiting for some guidance from the federal government. Here in Colorado, we reached out to Denver International Airport and RTD for comment. RTD says it is also waiting for further guidance from the federal government, and we have yet to hear back from the airport. While the number of wildfires burning in Colorado is increasing, the number of volunteer firefighters to fight those fires is doing the exact opposite. To help boost those numbers, state lawmakers are considering two new bills. One provides $5 million for better equipment and more training. The second bill would provide some funding for these departments and also behavioral health resources for the volunteers. People don't think about that much, but um, you know we've had fires in this state where well, we've lost firefighters and there's some real behavioral health issues there and this bill puts in a million dollars towards that but it's the training and get the equipment everything they need the governor is expected to discuss the annual wildfire outlook on friday departments we are talking to say this has the potential of being one of the worst wildfire years the state has ever seen Firefighters are working to contain the Duck Pond fire in Eagle County near Gypsum. This fire is about 60% contained, has burned less than 90 acres, and right now the only damage we're hearing about is some picnic tables and fencing at recreation sites along I-70. Fire officials believe that a person started this fire that did briefly shut down I-70, but they've not exactly said how it was started. All mandatory evacuations have been lifted. The 37E fire near Lyons in Larimer County is also now fully contained. In total, it burned around 120 acres. Now, everyone who was evacuated was able to go back home yesterday afternoon, and no buildings were lost in this fire. Aurora is looking for new ways to cut down on youth violence, along with gun and gang activity. The City Council will discuss a new plan during a study session tonight. Potential next steps include hiring what the city calls a violence interrupter. That person would respond after a violent incident in the hopes of stopping any retaliation. The plan would also fund a community organization to support families in crisis. China's strict COVID-19 measures couldn't protect everyone. Shanghai authorities reported the deaths of three people related to the virus. All were elderly and had underlying diseases. Now, these are the first deaths reported related to the recent outbreak, which has most of the city's 25 million people on week three of lockdowns. Overall, China has a high vaccination rate, 90%, but it is lowest among the elderly. People suffering from long COVID want large scale trials involving Pfizer's antiviral pill. It's based on two anecdotal reports of people getting relief from long COVID after taking Paxlovid. Now, one was a doctor, the other a woman who was reinfected with COVID and received the treatment. In both cases, the women reported improvements in months of severe fatigue, brain fog, insomnia, and other long COVID symptoms. Right now, there are no clinical trials planned with the medication to treat long COVID. Endometriosis, it's a sometimes life-altering condition that affects as much as 10% of women of childbearing age. My main symptom was excruciating pain when I had my period. Um, I would be bedridden for like two or three days, and that's every month. Um, I would have very heavy bleeding. I was um, anemic. Mm. Christina Ciancerelli has endometriosis, which means the cells that are supposed to be on the inside of her uterus are found outside. 
these lesions can grow on the uterus, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, and the intestines, the bladder, et cetera. And that is not normal. Not only is it painful, like you just heard, it can lead to infertility. Many women suffer for years without being diagnosed. When they finally are, it's through invasive laparoscopic surgery. And that's why the people behind the Feinstein Institute's Rose Study are encouraging women to enroll. They provided us the photos you're looking at here. Those cells lining the inside of the uterus are different in those with and without endometriosis. And we have been focused on developing a non-invasive diagnostic based on that. The Rose study needs menstrual blood from women, whether they have endometriosis or not. You can take a picture of the phone number you see right here on your screen to call for more information. Christina had several surgeries for her endometriosis, including a hysterectomy before finally finding relief. So much better. It's like I have my life back. She says that she is glad to have taken part in this study. She encourages others to do so to help find more people answers. Well, it's about that time of the year that seasonal businesses are starting to see more customers, but hiring this year may be even more challenging than last year. The changes that some businesses are being forced to make. And Jeffco is opening up a brand new library, but it's missing a key part, the staff, how it's going to work without any librarians next.